Hey folks, Fernando doing another video for more survivalists and today I'd like to talk about a very popular, widely accepted uh, prepper fantasy which is the Golden Horde. If, if you're not familiar with the Golden Horde, the idea is, and this is pretty much accepted like an avoidable fact of, of, of preparedness is, when shit hits the fan and there's going to be no more rule of law, cities will burst into flames because that's always what happens in cities when things go wrong and out of that misery and collapse those city people that are all lazy stupid and evil are going to be forming a golden horde it's going to be moving through the countryside attacking settlements and brave farmers we're going to be fending them off fighting them and eventually winning the day against the city folk <laughs> well it sounds kind of stupid because it is there's just no basis in reality for none of that ever happening before and there's no logical reason why it should now i was talking with is selco and toby the guys are going to be doing the the seminar in, in sweden april 4th guys if you have any chance at all of being there you know it is going to be a great opportunity to learn some very valuable information it is a, a great opportunity that anyone that could be there for this it's going to be close to stockholm not in the city specifically but sweden april 4th be there if you can now one of the things we're talking about is how hard it is sometimes to um, dismantle these fantasies that people have and the golden horde is definitely one of those things that people say yeah because the golden horde you know at, like if it's the most natural common sense thing the golden the golden horde itself was not a golden horde it comes from this idea that the uh, mongol empire as it advanced it through uh, eastern europe conquering of course and attacking cities it was some kind of random violent horde it was actually a, a, an empire and a very well organized uh, military effort so as to do those things so as to conquer those places it was not some random bunch of folks um, in the prepper community if people tend to think that the golden horde will be your average soccer mom and dad just driving their minivans and attacking people with their golf clubs in some mad max version of whatever that is not what happens when you have desperate people that have been deprived of basic uh, resources food water what happens is not a lot of fun it, it is quite sad actually it's not very entertaining or interesting people that just die off when you have had uh, famines when you've had genocides with uh, situations like the ones in, in in ireland or in ukraine where people have been you know strategically deprived or, or, of certain things or if uh, some great famine took place uh, and there just was not enough food people tend to stay wherever it is that they are and slowly die they end up starving little by little they just stay there waiting for someone to help them out no one no one does and it's starvation it's diseases and that's what eventually gets them they kind of stay there and die that is the reality this idea that out of nowhere people are going to be forming a golden mongolian horde and attacking is completely ridiculous you have to understand that words sometimes are, are not as clear a representation as we like to think. Barbarians, for example. They, uh, for Romans, anyone that attacked, anyone that was a non-Roman that would attack them, especially some of these um, Germanic uh, uh, societies that would attack them, they were all barbarians, right? But no such thing as... Conan the Barbarian ever existed. That's pure fantasy. That's made up stuff. It's of course borrowing from certain things, um, certain aesthetics of maybe uh, some uh, Viking stuff and such, and you make up this idea of what a barbarian is supposed to be. But it's mostly f uh, fueled by a fantasy and it's completely made up. You've never had like a barbarian society anywhere uh, in, in the world. It's a word that was used to represent barbarics people are not civilized like us romans you know and the same goes for the, for the golden horse so this idea is it's just not based in reality and there's no logical reason why such a thing should ever happen it, it is true that people have done terrible things uh, entire societies entire countries have done terrible things it's usually a very strong leadership that organized such a thing and it's a conscious well-organized effort with a very well um, 
clear support structure behind it. It's not some random Mad Max bunch of people ransacking and attacking places. In, in fact, when whenever you had a violently displaced people like refugees you have all sorts of, of stuff going on and we, we saw this in some some of the Middle Eastern refugee waves or even some of the um, the, the waves of, of illegal immigrants moving towards the United States right you yeah you, you know those that I'm talking about uh, yeah many of those would commit like petty theft and stuff along the way but it wasn't some whore attacking people in any organized fashion of any kind. Now, what it is very real, and it is a very real threat, is organized criminal gangs. And here you have to be careful again with the words. Organized uh, criminal gangs, sometimes people think of uh, you know, gangs as in uh, colors or, or gangs based on ethnicity or skin color, like gangs of uh, mostly black guys or uh, Latino gangs and that sort of thing. And how dangerous each of these ones is really depends to a great degree. You have some guys that are, that are more about like, yeah, my colors and being with my people and being among uh, similar folks. Um, you know, like you would have maybe uh, like a rap culture thing uh, that may well be involved in some criminal activity of some kind. You may have, you know, bikers that are involved in, in some kind of illegal activity or just guys that like loud motorcycles, which South Park has a very funny word, but politically incorrect word to describe them, which we're not going to be using right now. Uh, but, you know, guys that like loud motorcycles and such, um, they may or may not be criminals and same for some of these gangs that people think are completely harmless they may as well be some of them are quite dangerous as well you have some um uh, Latino gangs, especially go gangs with members that come from Central America. Some of those have been involved in in, in drug cartels and uh, were foot soldiers of those cartels. And they're very brutal people. They've done things you wouldn't believe. Just have to look it online. Anyone that's capable of skinning alive a person is is quite awful and it should uh, be regarded as a very dangerous potential threat, which it is. Uh, most of all, what I would say is, in my opinion, the biggest threat is organized criminal gangs that basically do this as a form of living, just uh, a line of work for them. Those would be the more dangerous ones because they are the more uh, cold-headed, more organized ones, and are far more likely to be more successful. You, we've seen quite a bit of this sort of thing in, in Argentina, it's, in South America it happens. It's usually people that have some kind of training, either former police officers or active duty police officers. It's been the case as well, they were doing this on the side. Some guys with military training may be as well. And these are folks that live normal lives in upper middle class neighborhoods, even gated communities. And when you ask what Joe does for a living, he he's in trading or he's in import export business or he's into marketing or some stuff. And all of a sudden he gets shot or he gets arrested because he was actually a, a, a criminal and he had a, a gang. And they would just do you know, jobs. Those jobs would be attacking uh, places that were profitable, maybe even attacking uh, trucks uh, on the road, which were carrying valuable merchandise, basically working like pirates. We would just stop a truck, we would have people to sell the, the goods they stole, and that was it. We're attacking different uh, places, robbing banks, stealing from... Uh, houses that have uh, valuables that they consider worth their effort. Those are very difficult to defend against because even with a minimum amount of, of planning, it is quite easy to attack someone. I mean, it doesn't take a genius to do a little bit of intelligence, see how someone behaves in, in a community or you know, a homestead. If you have a nice big place, you may be thinking they have lots of guns, maybe they have some money, if, especially for preppers. You know, one of the most common things is you're going to be having lots of guns, you're going to be having lots of stuff. Many preppers will have money, gold, silver, precious metals. Even if you don't have it, uh, they only need to think that you do so as to maybe consider going after it, you know. Um, so this idea, and people tend to overestimate their capabilities. That's a big one as well. They tend to think that whatever it is they're doing is going to be working because it has worked so far. And the truth is it has worked so far because you've never been tested to actually learn the horrible truth of how 
fully um, equipped you are to deal with that sort of situation. Listen, there was a, a very... Back in the day when The Simpsons were, were worth watching, there was an episode in which Lisa Simpson picks up a rock and says, Dad, it's like uh, as if this rock is, is if I'm telling you that it's a, a rock that is uh, repels lions because there are no lions around right now. This rock is not a, ro a lion repellent because I don't have any around here. Uh, it's just simply because there, there aren't. Um, and Homer goes like, okay, Lisa, I'll buy your rock for a hundred bucks. He just doesn't get the, the idea, the concept that she's trying to explain. Uh, the same thing works here. People think that whatever it is that they're doing is going to be enough if serious criminals come after them. The only harsh truth is uh, it's been working because it hasn't happened yet. If criminals do go after you, you're likely to see how poorly equipped you are to deal with that sort of situation. You may talk with your neighbors. You may have lots of guns. You may be a great shooter yourself. You may have some training yourself. You may have a military training. You may have military buddies with training as well that live nearby. How much security do you actually have in place as of right now? Do you have someone watching your perimeter? Do you have someone with binoculars watching all around you all the time? No? Well, that's how military operations end up happening. Huh? What, is it that you, what is it that makes the, the green zone safe in any uh, you know, military operation where you are in another country where people want you dead? Uh, I think it's called like being behind the wire, that the famous wire is that safe perimeter that you have that is strongly guarded. If you don't have a strongly guarded perimeter with active security 24-7, then you're open to attacks. Even then, for someone that has some minimum planning, it, it only takes just you know, a, a homestead. Even if you have some kind of security going on, um, the first thing uh, anyone with an ounce of brain will do is what kind of schedule is going on there? What kind of uh, people live there? Is, do you have wife? Do you have kids going back and forth doing shopping? Well, the, the first opportunity I have of that a family going shopping or going for ice cream, you ju just take some of those guys hostage and you make it back to a homestead and, and you're done. That, that is it. And look at what happened in, in, in Mexico with the, the Mormon family that got completely slaughtered. These were guys that had the guns. They were guys that had the you know, the control of their entire community basically somewhat okayed by the government for them to do their own security and either by accident or intended but the, the cartels just butchered them and the only reason why some of them are still there, many fled of course, is because they're allowed to be there. The moment they're not being allowed anymore, there's just not much you can do against an entire hostile environment. When you have an entire country uh, that is gone to hell, I always bring up the uh, example of uh, the white, uh, white farmers in South Africa. The government is kind of wink wink, uh, no you shouldn't be killing people but if it's white farmers it's kind of okay and look at what's been happening these are very determined people very well armed very uh, well defended in their positions and yet they're being killed by the thousands because at the end of the day it is nearly impossible to maintain constant security all day long if you're going about your life like more most law-abiding normal good people do most good folks are not focused concentrated all day long on watching behind their back. You cannot live like that long term. And very few people can afford the security so as to have that going on in their home set all the time. Even if you organize with people, how long could that possibly last? The examples are all over the place. You just cannot keep go going about that all day long. Listen, I had a, I have a, a, a good friend that um, a, a guy in a very good financial position, basically rich, you know, lots of money. He has uh, thousands of acres in different parts of the country and smart, clever guy, great shooter, tons of guns. He has his, his range and his, and his farm and his place and he practices. He has a, you know, long range shooting rifles and he's a great shot with all of that. And he knows what I do and we would have these conversations, a, a, a good guy. Um, and he would be of the position of, no, Fernando, we are very well said, we're very well prepared. I would, you know, mention my concerns about, look, you're, you may not be as well prepared or as uh, well defended as you think you are. Long story short, just a few days before I leave, he give, gives me a call. 
And just before I left Argentina, he calls me and he says, Fernando, we, we, got, we got robbed here. Yeah, and you were absolutely right. They, they went for one of the, the buildings. They got some people there with those hostages. They moved to the other building. And in just a matter of a few minutes, they had the, the, the entire place uh, under their control. They, they stole whatever it is that they were going after. Fortunately, they didn't hurt anyone, but you were right. Unfortunately, yes, I, I was right. Anything that is somewhat well organized, it's very difficult to de defend against. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't do your best effort to defend against that. Um, but it's going to be a lot more difficult than you probably think. And it is especially difficult if you're talking about a more isolated place where that isolation is not working in your advantage. It's working on the attacker's advantage. Your uh, response time is going to be nothing. Uh, uh, police presence or uh, people uh, with eyeballs on the situation unfolding that's not going to be a concern which it is for criminals in, in cities listen there's lots of bad things that happen in, in the cities i talk a lot, a lot about this kind of stuff in in my latest book street survival skills guys but which by the way i talk a lot about this how to defend on many of these things strategies tactics to use all based on things that either uh, have happened or that I've, uh, I'm aware of that has worked well for folks and successfully so. If not, I wouldn't even bother. But it's not really nearly as easy as many of you folks think. Um, it, it just isn't. And you, you just have to be honest about it. Be more critical. Um, what you can do so as to improve your security, by all means do it. Improve it as much as you can. Be very critical about that and, and don't fall for this fantasy of, uh, yes, uh, we're going to be able to do a lot of things which at the end of the day, um, not so very likely. The, the example of those folks in, in South Africa, uh, how terrible it's been for them. And one of the things that my friend mentioned is, you know, fortunately, they didn't hurt anyone because sometimes they do hurt people. Sometimes they, they talk. The thing is, they, they torture people thinking that there's anything being hidden, buried somewhere, maybe gold, maybe cash, maybe something that's being hidden from them, and sometimes they will hurt people, or just because they're just awful people, uh, just pure bastards, and they rape women, or they do awful things. So those things happen as well. Um, don't overestimate your capabilities, very, be very critical, and understand that it, if, if nothing terrible happened to you, it's likely because uh, you haven't been put to the test. So as to experience and see firsthand how easy it would have been if someone really wanted to get you. Guys, that's all for now. Uh, see you on the next video. Have an awesome day.